Wait, they have there, there, we, there go. we go. There you go. Boys and girls, welcome back for another exciting, thrilling, spectacular episode of the Book Asylum podcast. I am the host with the most Jack freaking Childress. And as always, I've got my crew, my gang, my almost sibling level idiot friends hanging out with me again this Saturday afternoon. And we are live coming to you direct from all across the place, straight from Puerto Rico, Angel Ramon, Kingston Springs, Tennessee, Kristen Vincent, coming to you from out in Texas where it's just bigger out there. The one and only bad wabbit, Anthony Castro out in stinking hot ass, Arizona, Jen Amato, potato, tomato, tomato, that's what I said. And I didn't and even change my name this time. You did not. Very good. Very good. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? And editor extraordinaire, the one and only Doc Freed is in the place. This week, we have a husband and wife dynamic duo of writers, Stephen and Mary Weller. Welcome to what Hi. is most assuredly going to be a flaming train wreck. Woohoo! So here we go. Yay. That's the best Yay. way to describe this. <laughs> so let's get this show off, you know, right out the gate. I want to know what is it like writing with your significant other? Is is it do you ever catch yourselves almost at the verge of divorce? I mean, like do or do y'all or do y'all no. just manage to make it work? Oh, boy. <laughs> do no. you husband? No, actually how it all started was um I was doing some professional writing and I was asking her to edit. And basically I said, if you are not picking on me and beating up on me and just going crazy, then you're not doing a good job. So I gave her <laughs> permission to just basically rip me up. And, and I said, really, you promise? You won't be upset? And he's like, no. And I was like, give me my pen back. And so I went back through and did it right. Yeah, it's a highlight for her. She loves it. She's just like, oh, what are you, you so, just yeah, gave her really nice. You gave her free reign. He did. And I always tell people must get my better at pointing out your flaws than your other. So mm. I mean, I was meant for this. And he takes construction, construction. Ugh. Criticism, thing, constructive criticism extremely well. Me on the other hand, I didn't Thank ask you. for his opinion, so I don't want to hear it. So, Amen. But, Amen. But yeah, that's how it works out. So he and we do them kind of separate. He writes the outline and starts the story together, and then I add in and flow, um, and that works out because I'm not a writer and I have no creativity. So there's that too. However, you're adding the flow. Yeah. She ma'am, ma'am, <laughs> ma'am. Get her in, get her in. <laughs> oh, yeah. She adds Let the stuff that people talk about are usually the things she added. Yeah. Um, we actually had a conversation yesterday. I don't like one of the characters anymore. I don't like his features. I don't like his attitude. And when we were talking about it, I was like, oh yeah. That was my character. I did <laughs> his features and Ouch. attitude. And I was like, yeah, I don't like him anymore. Wow, <laughs> wait. I don't like him anymore. So I just, uh, it's his I, book. I, I, I find it very hard <laughs> to believe that you have zero creativity. I don't. I cannot Be do, I, you have to um, give me well, the outline, the basis of it, but I cannot come up with anything on my own. So you have to give me the topic to write about. I can't just write. You have to give me a, uh, a mild description of a character or what you want them to do. And then I can work off of that. But no, so you I just need a little down. help. I need yeah, a you lot need of a help. Yeah. I need you a lot just of help. Need, <laughs> you need a, you need a, a foot, a, a foothold. I, yeah, I, and and not, that's, mm -hmm. but that's She's not, not no creativity. Oh, yeah. Don't Plastic. you do oh. that to yourself. Yeah. Shame no, on no, you. No, no creativity is watching paint dry. Yeah. We're not critiquing you. I'm doing that currently upstairs. Like I'm waiting for a coat to finish. But yes. Oh boy. <laughs> Funny you say that. She fleshes things wow. out beautifully. And it all kind of started when I was working on another today. book. Uh huh. Yeah. I was working on another book, mm -hmm. and there was uh, a young man and a young woman, and uh, I didn't know what the woman's supposed to be thinking. So I called my wife, and it's like, okay, realistically. 
what would a woman be doing in this situation? Ah. And that's where we got to the point where we find ourselves acting out scenes and yeah. uh, to try to bring, bring some well, realism ooh. to it. So it's a lot more fun yeah. uh, doing it that way. And so when she says she's not being creative, uh, she's extremely creative. She just yes. brings out new perspectives <laughs> and then she adds on top of, mm-hmm. uh, of things. So it's i think it's a beautiful combination mm-hmm. that see, sounds like why, an amazing combination and that's yeah. why we work so well together see he's that's good so supportive mm-hmm. of his book it's, it's, it's always me, good to have so. some, like a sounding board somebody to like bounce your ideas, bounce ideas off of, right. and stuff like that so yeah that's cool okay man. well you've got my curiosity up now hold up okay y'all act out scenes like yes. you're like standing in your living room and going back oh, yeah. and forth i mean okay we y'all do. got to do a facebook live of this <laughs> that yeah. sounds we like do. so much fun but we always do out loud <laughs> reads so when we get uh, another version of whichever book we're working on um we sit down and we read it and i'm usually he's the odds i'm the evens as far as chapters go and as we're reading i'm just like stop it's uh, the guy holds his hand up and says stop or looks away or like Psh, I'm gonna shoot you and do stuff like that or I'll turn around and or I'll go and pick something up and at some point he'll be like he'll look at me like what are you doing and then he'll read the next line and he's like oh okay because that's where I feel like I come in like okay your dude was standing over here how do you get in this room and how is he able to do this and what happened to this you know character over here they're just standing there staring at everything like what are you doing with them and so that's that's where I help out and he's like okay okay and I'm like why don't you have this person say that instead of them so that's kind of yeah so we sit at our table or throughout the house and yeah we I I'm yeah obviously so so sorry (laughs) that is so cool I'm crazy enough to be able to do that with myself yeah yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) okay now how many times have you been writing something is like what she's pointing out right here and you just straight up did the face palm like <laughs> I, I mean, you know it's a face palm every single time because <laughs> you're you know between all the edits because you know we're doing these especially these latest, uh, latest books these are time travel books and there uh-huh. is a lot of things that you're trying to do to make sure that there's no plot holes and then every time there's an edit you keep, you have to go through the entire book yeah. and to make sure so you just t- you uh, learn not to take anything personally, but th- there are some things that happen that are um, embarrassing. I would say it's like, oh uh, yeah, that should have been um, caught earlier. <laughs> uh, but then you just kind of like write it off and pretend like, oh yeah, no big deal. And at the same time, you go back and you're making the edits, and it's like that was the stupidest thing I ever came up with. Uh, <laughs> and so. I keep a point system, so I'm like, ooh, that's Katie's. Katie found it. Ooh, that's one for me. And then if it's <laughs> like we find multiple of the same error, and I'm like, that's still mine. I'm still okay. That's twelve for Katie and Stephen. Ha ha. Where are you? You got what two? And like when we're editing and stuff. So at the end, he buys me lunch or I buy him lunch, depending on who had the most. So it, we do keep it. I keep it lively. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. is awesome. How many times does he buy you lunch? Is it like 9%? <laughs> um, every day. It, it, it's every, every day. day. And whether I swipe my card or his card, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's the same account. So yes, every day. <laughs> here's, yeah. the part, yeah. here's the part that will probably throw you guys off. The action scenes. Uh, mm-hmm. fleshing out of the action scenes is usually her. She's mm-hmm. brutal. Uh, yeah. And in fact, a lot of the comments that we get on the reviews is the violence of the action scenes. They say it's absolutely <laughs> critical to the storyline. They understand, but it's not suitable for very young children. Um, mm-hmm. And that's her. She's, she's just as brutal as I am when it comes to well, look at that things. red hair. I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, month, this month it's red. Um, but no, I don't think these characters should die from a flesh wound. Like if you're going to kill this guy, kill him with Make a it. little bit of honor or some glory here going on. Like, go this, big or this, go this, home. This, Yes, yeah, no. this guy yes. just did all this work and you're going to give him a flesh wound? Like, come on. Yeah, that's not he's going to die from dysentery. We yeah, all die you know, from dysentery. You might as well give him staph infection or something. I'm just like, really? Yeah. This guy could do better. Yeah, there's and a then, guy who got shot thanks to her. He lost his own arm now, you know? Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, she doesn't go any, she doesn't do anything halfway. She's like, I no, mean, but let's be clear. There are times when I read it and I look at him and I was like, 
I sleep next to you. Like there are <laughs> things. He comes up Aren't you scared? Like, <laughs> like, yeah, I don't think one I open. So. Oh God. Well, let's get into the uh, the time travel stuff that you guys are working on because I, I just haven't looked down. I see Nick Plumridge is uh, watching the show right now, and he has the time traveling tourist. It's a series he's working on. It's really good. So uh, while we got him around, have you always had uh, an interest in the the old idea of time travel? Not, not really. What happened was, I would say about 25 years ago, just the idea of a 19th century American sailor having a command of a starship was like, that would be like totally cool. Yeah. And uh, so what happened was around 2005, we actually had this document because we actually found the original documents. So in October 2005, we started toying around with this uh, concept. And so 17 years later, we finally published it. But um, but the idea of it was uh, really just to explore a story where uh let's just make things as ludicrous as possible but if you could believe in the characters then you'll just believe in the world building around it and that's where a lot of our focus was on um but you know with all the science and all these theories and everything we just asked the one simple question were you there how do you know and so we we try to make it all believable, but then we just go to the same basic concept. How would you really know you weren't there? And that just really gives us the opportunity to explore a lot of different uh, things. But now when we create this universe, we have to be very careful that now we're, we're making sure this construct is, is consistent and seamless and that... Uh, yeah. Um, right. right. So it, it's a it, it takes a lot of work on the outlining and the plot holes can just creep up really quick, even though it's time travel. Yeah, it, it, it can be a real tricky thing. Well, I got a question about the time travel that you guys are doing, because like, you know, I'm a big nerd when it comes to all that sciencey funny kind of thing uh what kind of time travel are you guys uh working with because you got your back to the future time travel where you go back 20 years plant a tree come back and the trees there fully grown and then you got your multiverse multiverse multiversal mm -hmm. time travel where you go forward or backwards in time and it doesn't change it it just creates a branch a completely different universe variants so what we yeah. did, what we did is uh, we actually combined it where in the normal state of things, things are multiverse, but the premise of this story is the timeline's locked. So the whole idea of a paradox and everything like that is possible. Yeah. So how will you travel through time without disrupting? And so it's uh, uh, creating such things as self-correcting time loops and this whole concept and then but you're not only dealing with that problem the other problem you're dealing with is communication and language and cultures and uh things of that nature and what is it that gets people to believe in another character and a lot of times um you know you look at history what gets this mass population mass populace to follow a person with very little convincing and other times it takes a lot of convincing. And you, so you're having to address all these different things. And how do you create, make this as realistic as possible, even though this is completely ludicrously fiction? And I think I'm making up uh, words right now, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. All words are made up if you think about it. I mean, yeah. they really are. <laughs> so, but Hell, we, I live in the like, South. We always make up words. Yeah. <laughs> But originally, this this book over right here, uh, which is the first of a series, uh, I was toying around with it taking place 100,000 years in the past. And I said, you know, uh, if I start putting numbers to it, then people are going to nitpick it. So I actually just yes. said, you don't know. You don't know yeah. how far. And uh, so that way you you can speculate all you want. So we put things where we have like a timeline. So we put the elements of it, like what history says. But if history proves out wrong, the story can still stand. And yeah. so we try to be, mm -hmm. we try to master the art of a lot of details with no details. <laughs> That's good, though. I mean, 
it's it, it's it's different it's different you know because most of most of the time travel stuff they have to they put a date to everything and i think it's mm-hmm. really cool where you have to kind of guess where you are depending mm-hmm. on what's going on in, in the environment so that's why cool. now, mm-hmm. your idea of selective specificity in the book is really fascinating it makes mm-hmm. heaps of sense because i've worked with some authors because i edit I work with some authors and it's like, this didn't happen. Then you've got to change all this or this street didn't exist or this subdivision didn't exist. You know, I'm, I'm detail oriented sort of person. These didn't exist then. And with Jeff, I used to have, you know, Jeff, this hasn't existed for 20 years, you know, no, (laughs) have it today because it did continue that ferry 20 years ago, which was the last time you were in Hawaii. So just, (laughs) <laughs> and and he'd have to go back and you know we'd have to work on it and okay how do we reinstate it and, so that it makes sense because someone's going to rip it totally apart yeah. by that's yeah, some, some history nazi yeah yeah and and they will jump down you and just and, and you know people troll so they will just be yeah you're right mm-hmm. i always say that I, that's one of the parts i love about doing my own comic book in a totally fantastical made-up world is i don't have to worry about historical events i don't have to worry about realistic uh equipment and weapons and stuff i just pull it out of my ass and <laughs> write it, it in. on the paper Good yeah on i mean <laughs> <laughs> I used to like I, I I wrote historical fiction, so yeah, I I've had my share of historical trolls trying to yeah yeah. Well, mm-hmm. all, 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 only to find out what they were showing that was incorrect anyway. So. Right, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so I don't know if this was asked because I had to step away from the computer for a minute, so I do apologize if it is a repeat question. But what kind of um, uh, research? did you have to do for your time travel theory? Because I'm in the process of writing a sci-fi right now and I'm like looking up quantum physics bullshit and, and, and astronomy and all this other stuff. And I'm just like, my brain hurts sometimes. (laughs) Get an editor, Jen. (laughs) (laughs) I Doc, it. I'm I working have. on it so I can afford you. <laughs> I, I, I gave you such a good quote. Don't even start that. With. I'm helping you guys out. <laughs> so, because I love you. <laughs> so it's more than just the time travel that we have to research. So we actually right, because to... you're you're using words like multiverse and stuff like mm-hmm. that, but there's tons of different theories out there, you know. Mm-hmm. And of course, because I researched this, now I've got to know what did you research did and you how research? did you figure it out to narrow whatever down? Well, obviously, uh, you know, some of the work by Stephen Hawkins and oh uh, god, I'm doing, and doing I'm doomed. <laughs> Um, I'm doomed. I'm not that smart. (laughs) Well, here's the thing. A lot of Uh, us are trying to tell a story, not write a textbook here. Yes. We're trying to come in. It's like there's some elements like you have to factor in time dilation and then, but then there's ways around that. And, Uh and so the point is, is, you know, we want to try to tell a story is we, don't know what's all out there. So you <laughs> write about wow. anything, you just got to point out that you don't know. And yeah. make it but sound good. <laughs> yeah, if you go way into the distant past, who's mm-hmm. to say that we weren't advanced on this planet? And why right. they and they're they, finding actually that uh-huh. we were more advanced than we're giving ourselves oh, credit uh, for. Oh yeah, so we have like uh, mega uh, space, uh, space battle cruisers uh-huh. and it mixed in with like the equivalent of an F-15. Um, okay. We got this hodgepodge of everything because the idea of it is if you're going to have all these uh, civilizations living together, not everyone's going to be on the same level of advancement. And sure. uh, not only that, but just from the scaling of everything, you're not going to have the resources to make everything exactly the same. You're going to You're going to pick and choose. And then society is also going to be, um, you know, treated accordingly. So when we come in, it really gave us a lot of freedom to do stuff that we're familiar with, mix it in with advanced stuff. And Mm -hmm. the whole thing of it is just, 
like why not have gladiator fights back in you know back then mixed in where it's like uh you got concessions being offered at the same yeah, time yeah why not yeah why not you know <laughs> yeah. why not well, sign me up for that angel's <laughs> ears just perked up <laughs> yeah. but, but the weird the weird part was is you know um my daughter she did the artwork and her stipulation was that she wanted a dragon in the uh, in the book and i said mm -hmm. but this is a science fiction book she said i don't care i want a dragon and so we had a dragon and people are calling it a sci fantasy and yeah. uh, you just can't imagine the book without the dragon really do. sign yeah. me up that. <laughs> <laughs> love it yes <laughs> literally sign me up for that <laughs> so yeah. how many books uh, do there. you have so we have written three books i have contributed uh i started off in the medical world so this is like the first book i contributed at um, i saw those dr marshall still um but then uh i wrote uh, a history book which is uh -huh. the progressive machine saw that one which too is, uh which really kind of just teach you to respect history so when you write time travel it kind of makes sense mm -hmm. um, then you got uh medical fiction um this is based off of working 10 years with uh, hospitals across the you know americas on operating okay. emergency and but oh. i just had to write it as a fiction so what we have now is we're about to publish uh, this is Kantara the Traveler. So we got right. two coming out. Okay. It's called the Captain. We've already written. This is the this is this is book three right here. It's already written. It's called The Prince. And here's book four. It's also already written. And the reason why we have to write so far in advance is because this is time travel. Mm -hmm. And you have to know what's going to happen and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So we we spend a lot of our time actually in the editing phases. Okay. Um, so we will do a full uh, read through out loud, probably six times per book um, on doing these. So it, it's a no joke. But the Kantara, the captain, um, should be out in about a month. And okay. so, and if you want to go to our website, OlsonPlace.com, uh, okay. we actually have the synopsis of the first four books. And it's seven is a seven book series. Uh, but the, the synopsis of the first four books is is there to kind of uh, give people an idea of what's coming up. Um, but I think book two was really thrilling for me because okay. book one was, it, it's literally uh, kind of like you're in the trenches. How do people get close together? Well, when you're in the trenches together, you develop a bond that is... Yeah that that lasts and so i decided to uh make book one about it's all about being in the trenches together and it's fast paced and if you know a lot of cops and soldiers will say you know if you're not a cop or if you're not a soldier you just can't understand and that's kind of like the relationship of these characters these guys have been it into uh been in this together so only they can really truly understand and so there's that bond that they create which kind of made book two so much more fun to write because Please. going through the trenches was not easy to write <laughs> so I I can imagine. um one of them i'm jack normally asks uh do you have any books on audible or plan to have them on uh, Dakota James is uh, recording Kantara the Traveler right now. And we should hopefully get that up in here in about a couple of weeks. Cool. Cool. Now, piggybacking off of that, <clears throat> how many narrators did you go through before you finally were like, yes, you're <laughs> the one? Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, I think we're wow. gonna get a good out of this. That's with a tough question. Well, it's not just that. It's not just the talent. It's just them being able to finish the job and deliver. Yeah. It's really oh, yeah. Problem. Yes. Because I mean, a lot of people say that they're interested in doing it, and then when you task them out, okay, do this for me, you know, and then we don't ever see the product or did you, yeah, it's crickets. Did you guys go through like Fiverr, Upwork, or did you guys like go through any kind of particular uh, platform to find these? Uh, no, not at all. I, I was really looking at doing uh, going through Amazon, and yeah. we are going to upload through Amazon. But honestly, uh, I really want to develop more relationships with people for the long term. 
And so uh, Dakota, he's a up and coming anime uh, voice actor. Voice mm -hmm. actor. Oh, that's cool. And since yeah. since this book is really in an anime style, when you when you if you go read it from that approach, we really yeah. want to kind of have that kind of actor. And so it was really about just trying to find someone that could fit into our vision. So it, it, it as opposed to like going, oh, we're going to give you three auditions, you listen. Now we did a little bit more search. And in fact, it was the artist uh, who helped us with some of the, the renderings. Uh, she is the one that helped identify uh, Dakota. So we go to uh, cons, sci-fi cons and writer cons and uh we went to was it fan expo or fan, fan expo that one was we fan went expo. to we've been going for years so we went to one and we met an artist because he tries out several artists left and right and again it's the whole delivering on the product that you know he gays or nays them or whatever um and she kesha just she's like go talk to these people they're trying to get into it and so we went and talked to him and his voice was great and it was like, okay, if you want to try it, let's give you a try. And can you deliver? And so he actually delivered. But I will call randomly, like I call GameStop locally because my son's friend wanted PlayStation 2 broke or something. And I'm like, hey, do you guys have a PlayStation 2? And this man's voice was awesome. And he just did his whole welcome, you know, thanks for calling GameStop. Da, 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 da. And I was like, wow, your voice is really cool. Have you ever thought about da, 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 you know? And he was mm. like, um no did you want something because like, I, was like interviewing him. Oh, weirdo. I, was like, I forgot why i called yeah exactly so <laughs> anyone some are we have several kids we have four and so another one some of his friends they have really good voices and we're like have you ever thought about doing this can you say this and actually my husband comes up, up with the names and every to the books and we were saying them one way and he, we gave them a copy of the book and he said it another way. And my husband's like, I like the way you say it. Say that again. Can you record mm -hmm. yourself saying that? So now <laughs> that's the way the word is said. And I'm um, like, that's, that's not so the way cool. I say it. Like, but when I read it, it's still the way I want it. But yeah, now it's read. He says it a different way, which makes sense, you know, but yeah. anytime we hear someone's voice, it's like always in the back of our head. And it's like, I wonder if they'll do a, you know, a voiceover for us and whatnot. So, yeah, yeah but we don't go through any conventional means. Like I kind of stalk you or, you know, I just happen to run into you at the store or something. And I'm just <laughs> like, Hey, so yeah. That's hysterical. Yeah. I've always <laughs> wanted to do voiceovers for cartoons and stuff. Have I'm you? always making voices playing with my kids and stuff, but see? I just, you know, I've never, I've never had the uh, outlet to do it. See, in Dakota's with, is it Funimation or Crunchy, Crunchyroll? Crunchyroll. Yeah, he, he just got, signed on. Crunchyroll, yes. Crunchyroll, yeah. Okay. I know that and I love that. Funimation over Crunchyroll, but that's, you know, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> like he is with Crunchyroll now. And then same thing with your artist, Kesha. She just signed on with DC. DC. So DC. we got her before she got the name. And I'm like, so I still get a discount, right? Because you did uh -huh. my first, so... <laughs> But, um, I applied yeah. to Image Comics, but they haven't <laughs> ever got back to me. So. Right. Yeah. Well, it, but the names are kind of because I'll do a lot of research because, like, uh, you know, I'm trying to say what looks like a very old name. So I'll research Sumerian names and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, I won't necessarily know how to pronounce it. And then also trying to create a vibe of a scene, I will try to come up with like what was the oldest known recorded music. And then try to get those interpretations. And then what is the uh, oldest written music? Point is, is mm -hmm. the sounds and the words are two different things. So I'll put these down. But I, I commonly will sit there and not know who the character, the person is talking about because I don't recognize the sound. Uh, I had in the progressive hospital, um, a doctor who wrote the four to it was talking about Matthias. I said, who's Matthias? And um, he says, your character from uh, Brazil. I said, Matthias? He says, it's pronounced Matthias. I was like, <laughs> oh, well, there you go. And so it's just, um, you know, I, I do the research, but I don't necessarily do the research on the sound. And so yeah. I think it kind of makes it fun. But there was a couple of characters who names are very intense. And so they'll 
the voice uh, uh, actor will ask us, how does this sound? We'll find someone else to record it, to send it to him because I can't do it. Yeah. And sometimes when we read it out loud, I'm like, his name's Monty. And he's like, no, it's Moti. And I'm like, no, you just forgot the N. You you wrote it wrong. Like, because I can't remember Moti. I can remember Monty. And so he was like, okay, honey. And we just keep on. So the character is Moti, is Monty to me and Moti in his book, whatever. So Well, two things. One, if you ever need access to other narrators, we got them. We oh, know wonderful. we're friends with them. Like, right. We literally yeah. have a group that's the uh, Word Peddler Audiobook Club. Wow. And there's narrators in that thing. And you can just go in yeah. and ask questions and find them. Like, uh, you know, how uh, Doc brought up Jeff. Um, he always used Matt Crow for pretty much everything. Okay. Yeah. And that dude's got some pipes on him. Yeah. He, he yes. can even kind of, he can even mostly do my voice because <laughs> I'm in a few books of Jeff's. By he way. does he, he does books true. quite literally a lot of books <laughs> he does suck doing he never the female survived, Jack. Always <laughs> yeah. but like because like jeff had um epic mayhem and my character is the lead female my favorite and <laughs> she's not nice <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a little close to reality actually to me <laughs> <laughs> and a lot to him but mm. um he, you know, I, I don't, I, the way he does some female voices kind of irritates me, but other than that, he is an amazing, amazing voiceover. See, I would like to have male and female. Reading yeah. Out. Yes. Yeah. That would be cool. Right. Cause on some of them, um, I'm like, it takes me a minute to realize who he's, what part he's on and like, who's thinking or yeah. things. Cause it, his voice, it does change, but I'm like, it's more like a whisper and I'm like, who. Who's that character? But, but it, it also just ends up all kind of running together. I'm not a big audiobook fan. See, I, I have do, to hold it. Do you? I've read some amazing ones. Again, dual voices where you have male and yeah. female. Those have been, I've never been disappointed with that. But some of the single male voices that run through it, it does make me stop and, okay. Who like, oh, again? crap. Where am I I'm at? I'm an audiobook horror. But there's nothing but better than holding a book itself and reading. Yes, it. I prefer and just smelling it, See, just smelling like, the book. I'm a I will get a book, physical a copy book. of the book, and wait until it comes out on audiobook so I can read along with it. Okay, <laughs> you read along. At least you open the book. Okay. Yeah, I remember when I had that cassette tape where I read along with the book when I was See? like five. Yeah. <laughs> you can along with me well, in this hey, book. Look, yeah. no. For the turn the page. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The little noises and stuff to turn chime, the page. It's time to turn the page. Yep. No, I, I I listen to audiobooks a lot though because I have kids and a no. lot going on, and it's yeah. hard to sit down and actually read a book. Oh, yeah. I get I five know. words in, and it's I need, I want, I got. I oh, that sounds, like, and, so, sounds <laughs> like my my husband. Your husband, so, yeah, right? I just put it in my headset <laughs> and I just do my daily thing, but you know. It's, yeah, I like some of them are really good though. Like, like a lot of the Star Wars ones. I don't know if you guys have ever listened to the audiobooks for Star that Wars. Was gonna be my they, second thing, dude. They have uh females for females, okay. men for men, actually okay. different men for different men, and uh, sound effects and oh, sound really? effects. <laughs> so, like when they describe a, a lightsaber battle, you hear the lights. They're really good. They're really On good. On cue, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm hoping that when, because uh, I'm I'm hoping to do like an action comic with uh, Bad Web and Number One soon, okay. where like, the pictures move and stuff, and people narrate oh. what's oh, being said. Fun. And so I'm going to be getting into that that uh, arena soon of, of looking for narrators and voice actors. Well, well, don't forget March, and you two probably don't know this, um, but in March, we have a whole month where we are interviewing voice narrator. actors, oh, yeah. really? narrators. Yes. So March is oh. going to be a big month where we've got a bunch of different voice and narrators um, that are going to be coming on the show. So that might be a really good time. Oh, absolutely. If you don't, if you don't get the time to watch us any other time, that would be a really good time to March. Okay. check in yeah. and, you know, uh, Jen, what what, Jen, what? No, Carl, Me Carl, Carl Meadows is watching. Oh, son oh, of a bitch. No. Carl, yeah. we love you. We but love oh you. my God, if you do not stop. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> I 
Hello, hello, hello. How are things across the pond? Are you having some tea and crumpets this morning? Oh, oh, Jesus. Lord. Jesus <laughs> Christ, Zach. You right, suck with that accent. Right now he's going. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, you, and I, you... I understand him. Hey, look, this has become a time honored tradition. So it really has. Yeah, yeah, you are really, you are oh, really you never going to get the. You're never going to get the spot <laughs> for any British actor, voice actor, or anything like that. You can just forget it. Hey, look, if My Dick friend... Van Dyke could be in Mary Poppins, then so, surely there's a place for me. That I'm not watching anymore. He just tortures us all. <laughs> in our latest book that's coming out, um, we got to play around with uh, the British... Um, uh, language, language sort of speak the way they speak we, yeah, we, their spent, accent. we spent two weeks in 2014 <laughs> oh, in, in england, england. and oh. um <laughs> yeah. we, uh, we completely went overboard and <laughs> well, we had to scale back a lot because uh we were using um those guys are a bunch of wankers bloody hell and all this other kind of stuff we had that all written in the uh in there we had to try to make it but we were trying to come up with Everything that the Brit, uh, the British, that you heard, uh, yeah, everything yeah. that we heard, everything they said, and then we try to mix it in with these um, 19th century American West slurs. Oh. So, <laughs> you had this mixture of sap heads and bloody hell and all this <laughs> other kind of stuff coming. Just, uh, we were, oh, uh, we were just having a lot of fun with that, but. Uh, um, um, yeah, <laughs> I can just see people just acting that out, having a good time. But... Wait, and our <laughs> two oldest ones, we took that was their senior trip, was go to England for the two weeks, and so they were with us, and they picked it up so quickly as yeah, great kids do, um, oh, yes. those teenagers, and they were just walking around constantly, just repeating everything they heard and stuff. Yeah. And yeah, so they helped us with that too. <laughs> so... Now, now, where all did you guys go when you were in England? Uh, we were, uh, we basically stayed uh, around Buckingham Palace, so we were on that side. Of the, uh, but it was Queen's swanky. Where we, yeah, we, we were in, yeah, what was it called? Croyton. Croyton, yes, Croyton. We spent a lot of time there. So we well, went to the more, Croyton, mate. yeah, so the suburban area to where we weren't in the whole touristy, and then we would take the train or the tube. And we would um, travel into town and stuff and go do everything there. But we try to stay um, to give the kids more of a realistic view of, you know, how it really real life is. was like. Um, yeah. And yeah. not just all the tourist yeah. places where everything's done up and, you know, gouge you for prices. And, and all it looks stuff. good. Yeah, exactly. My, my first book was based off of my friend who is in the UK. Okay. Who was her watching. Her name Saw is her Jana, who is watching. Hi, Jana. Oh. And this Hi, is Jana. The, that's the book. Good book. And it was a great book. <laughs> Um, and I actually, I was very fortunate to be able to ask her, okay, so when you're in this situation, would you say this? This or that. This right. is this is what my dumb American brain thinks that you <laughs> would say. And she's like, actually, you know, yeah, yeah, I would say that or I don't even know what that is. And right. I'm just like, okay, okay. So let's pretend you've been Americanized for 10 years. That's how we're going to go with how this. We're gonna go with <laughs> so, well, that's, that's how what, I fixed it. When we were there, our the oldest son would always sit there when we said something stupid or we didn't grasp whatever we were looking at. He would just go, Americans, and he would just walk away. <laughs> and then the people would look at us and some would nod their heads and stuff like that. And it was like, and that was the catchphrase, Americans. And we just That's keep talking hilarious. and it was like, okay, we just I don't said, get it. There was a guy oh. who had Americans and like, then he knocked his poor kid's head into the fridge. Yeah. <laughs> like, and they were yeah. locals. So yeah, I don't, mm -hmm, yeah. they want to point fingers. So dad was doing his daddy thing and put little girl on his shoulders but we're walking through a tunnel and there's lights that say exit and you know <laughs> arrows and he's just walking and then the other little ones are with him and the mom's over there pushing whatever and then yeah he goes we go this way and hmm, oh. head into that sign oh, and I'm like poor yeah thing. Americans don't always Please. do that like <laughs> I, I guess she was used to it because she just carried on I mean, she bounced <laughs> <laughs> they, he didn't have to thing. take her down mom's like are you okay 
there's a there's a callus up there. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> her, her, her literal skull is literally is, thicker. I, she there. probably has a dent, but yeah. And then that's what my son's like. That's not American thing. And I was like, see, so, exactly. But yes, well, that was an un, yeah. <laughs> we were bringing surprised it, we got bringing to it back to uh, narrators and yes. for like being you know with the British and all that stuff. Uh, Danielle Cohen is someone very who good. Up. Uh, very, very good very very good did the um lucky versus Lockie the apocalypse versus the apocalypse series oh. which is um, carl meadows who i was just torturing it, uh yeah. if you guys haven't read that uh it's, 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 it's a spinoff of the chris philbrook uh adrian's undead diary universe also what's it called again an amazing uh series um, it, it's uh, l-o-c-k-e-y Lockie, Lockie versus the apocalypse her name's aaron Locke, but all her friends call her Lockie. Lucky. They call me lucky. <laughs> See, he did it. I believe, yeah, but the, he sounds Liverpool like she does. Okay. So, you sound like Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> well, you sound like Which, a dick. <laughs> we're not surprised. I do everything. <laughs> yeah, <right? clears throat> That's my but Yes, uh, very good series. Uh, it was one of those you don't want to put down once you start it. Um, Adrian's and she does parkour, man. Uh, my, one of my favorite books of the Adrian Undead Diary series is when Lockie and Adrian meet up. That was freaking awesome. Uh, and then that one, that was kind of weird because you had the normal narrator doing all the Adrian stuff, and yeah. then you had Danielle doing the Lockie stuff, but then you get to a point where when they cross over, it goes back to the regular narrator doing Lockie, which was just not the same. Mm, not the same. Okay. Not the same. Now, once you get used to hearing Danielle doing Lockie, it's like, okay, that's what she sounds like. And she's a hoot. She's a little pain in the ass, but she is a yeah, freaking she's hoot. A shit. <laughs> <laughs> but now, before we get turning this into the Carl Meadows show over here, by the <laughs> way, across the pond, <laughs> um, Eagle, <laughs> let me ask you this. What is one of the Things in hindsight, when you look back on it, was probably one of the weirdest things you researched ever writing anything. Where you just went, why did I just look that up? Uh, weirdest. Uh, I, I would probably say, quite frankly, uh, some of the stuff where you're trying to make some of the situations more realistic. You come across some things that uh, you are... Um, uh, such as some of the violence and some of the things that some people do. Sometimes when you do some research, you come across some things you're like, oh, that's too real. Yeah. And, uh, and that's sometimes where you, you, I would make the conscious debate. Like, for example, there's some people that post things on the internet that is just, you know, absolutely horrid. And uh, you're trying to do, trying to get some understanding and, uh, because that stuff is out there, I will make a conscious decision to dial it back because you don't want to have a person to have nightmares. <laughs> and so, um, and um, I mean, how true are we to that? Yeah. <laughs> are you, how serious are you about that? <laughs> because I don't know, there's some people I'd be more than happy to give a nightmare to. <laughs> Uh, well, well, there, there's I some thought stuff. That was like, the goal of the we, we all have the best, right? Well, they, like I said, there's some stuff over here that uh, you know. At what point do you take it to where they're having fun, and then at the other point, to where do you take it to where it's no longer fun? Yeah, and um, that right. is that is where uh, I find I have to draw the line. This is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be entertaining. It's supposed to be eye opening. Whatever it is, but then there's also the point where. Um, uh, you know, you, you you draw your own line, what you want to do as the author and uh, stuff like that. And so I, I tried to find it. So doing some of the research sometimes takes us down roads that I was like, oh gosh, I'm glad uh, people are not researching or uh, looking at our browser <laughs> history. Uh, <laughs> you come across some pretty yeah. gross stuff. Yeah. I do not research anything. So yeah, no, I don't. I don't do any research. I mean, yeah. like names, but that's a basic research. But no, I that's his department, so I don't have to um, No. Well, hey, if, if y'all find yourself in a, in a drought trying to come up with some, like, new original names that you've never used before, um, 
they're here. They're here. Right here. <laughs> okay, right <please>. here. Yes. <laughs> I, I do say, have I, a question. Look, May I ask one? Yes. Okay. No, thank you. No. And Go ahead. so one book that each of you would recommend that we absolutely must read. Oh and God. You one book. I know. Oh God. All right. Well, I'm going to do what I do in books of horror all the time. And even though he's not here today, I'm still going to stump for him. Wild Eyed Southern Boys by Richard R. Rose. You get in first book, you get zombies versus Sasquatch. Yeah. Try That's that. Opposite. Very well done. It's okay. a it's a horror comedy buddy tale. All that. It's so good. The third book is out now. In fact, I've got the poster of it hanging on my wall over here because because i'm on the cover <laughs> um and he's so working are you on the book zombie book. or are you the sasquatch like which um, i he's i'm actually jackass. i'm i'm literally a jackass i'm the villain in this particular one and um i uh <clears throat> by the time you get to the second book which is actually a prequel it takes okay. you back to the founding okay. of towns in tennessee because mm -hmm. it's set out in you know the peaceful side of the smoke is where right. it's set and so they deal with the zombie thing then you go back in time to get some backstory on some characters and learn about the Rougarou which you know Cajun werewolves why okay. not you know he has literally worked in a ton of cryptids oh, yeah. like, he, you know Mothman's in there Jersey Devil JD yeah. is in there uh, the Lake Champlain monster is in there and he's got a really cool scene with that yeah. at the beginning of book three involving um, one of the other characters, which is based on his own daughter, yeah. which is really cool. Yeah. So, <laughs> yep, there it is. Attack on it. Yeah, I'm on the right hand side over there. I'm the guy standing by the Ruger Room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I'm a but fan I'm, of it. It, so. it sounds like when you when you explain it just offhand, you know, oh, zombies and Sasquatch. It sounds like it may be a kooky kind of like comedy. Right. But, but it's not. It, it's it's awesome. It's very well yes, done. It really is. It's very well written. <laughs> it really is. And it really is. Uh, uh, it, it draws you in. Yeah, I was so there. so that one's my, that one's my recommendation. <laughs> All right, who's next? Who's next? Who's next? I I, I know where always, you're going. There, yeah, you already know what I'm going to say. Adrian's Undead Diary, book yeah. one. Uh, get that. It's by Chris Philbrook. Um, yeah. That's it right there. And I started that maybe, I don't know, Chris Gilbert. 11 years ago. I just randomly grabbed it off of, and started listening to it at work. Okay, and, but you have finished it within 11 years, right? No, oh, I, yeah. there's 15. I think <laughs> No, I mean the first book, book but you have finished the first yes, book. Okay. Oh, if yeah, it takes course. you 11 years to get through book one, I don't see no, that. No, no. Oh, no, no. He's like okay. me. He's current on the series. Okay. We're all oh, the way to I've where read, we are. He's he's had 14 books out uh, in that oh. per, that series, and I've probably read every single one of them at least three or four times. Really? And a little uh, more hype on that. Um, then you had Carl, who was such a big yeah. fan that he wanted to write the Lockie series, which Chris yeah. signed off on and did the editing for. Yeah. Then he yep. started letting people write uh, fan fiction. So there's yeah. a, a, a there's book that's... books of that, fan fiction. Everything. Yeah, short stories. Wow. It's a massive universe. Massive yeah. universe. So what, that's why I always say the first one, because once you read the first one, you're in. You're, you're done. It's it. <laughs> it's a roller coaster. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you are hooked. All right, Angel, give us one, buddy. Oh, yeah, I got one. Uh, this is actually going to be an, uh, a historical fiction one. Uh, by David Lingard. Love this that is, one. Yes, La the Gladiator. La Gista, yes. It's basically a, a gladiator. Uh, well, not a, it's a guy who is, who works with a guy works with a gladiator, and he mm -hmm. gets this mystical powers. He raises gladiators. I mean, is it? You have to read it. I mean, it, if you if you're really into Roman history like I am, you're gonna enjoy it big time. Like I got that back. Uh, I do like Roman history. But cool. yeah, there is definitely a fantasy element to the yes. uh, Lanista book. I mean, like you get into like runes and different things like that, how it can give them different enhancements and make them stronger, but it's considered cheating. You know, it's yes. like I even listen to the audio book as well, which which is rare for me. I don't listen to audio books much. I actually read and the audio book is spectacular. Is it? It is. Oh. It is. It's yes. really well done. All right, Doc. Hmm. Curious to see where she goes, to be honest with you. Because I know where Jen's going before we ever get there. 
Yeah, well, but I, I might have surprise so many you. Books I've read is the problem. It yeah, was, exactly. How do you pick just one? Pick one. <laughs> yeah, good and question. I honestly, I I really can't wait to get your book, Stephen, because I I'm going to get um <laughs> tangled oh, up in your cord. I yeah, <laughs> if I don't hang myself. <laughs> But uh, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to because I do love mm -hmm. the medical thrillers. I do love and and that's what that is, right? It's a medical thriller. The uh, the Progressive Hospital. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's actually required reading in some universities. Uh, wow. So, uh, uh, yeah, so, Ooh, who's um, a big boy? <laughs> well, oh it's like it's you, know, you know. Have you ever wondered? You know, you go to have surgery with, with the family why mm -hmm. are things taking so long why are there so many hiccups well now you're going to know why and you know a lot of the you know um uh this is from 50 plus hospitals all across the americas and some of our poor performing hospitals look mm -hmm. like this and there are right. things that can be done but i wrote it as an educational thriller because I didn't want to write a textbook. So to kind of You wanted it, people to read it. Yeah, I wanted people <laughs> to read it and have fun with it. So I remember when I wrote this, the prologue was originally about this little old lady who is going to get her knee replaced. She's been undergoing this pain and this is going to relieve the pain. And if you know anything about what what your knee looks like uh, when you get a knee replacement is pretty horrid and it's a lot of pain. So I wrote that and everyone who read that prologue, everyone hated it. Uh, so uh, I rewrote it and um, it started off where two guys in hazmat suits walking into uh, a hotel room to a dead body and ends up the hotel's on fire and everyone's like, well, we like that a lot better. And so uh, more, wow. <laughs> a little bit more on the morbid side, but it's to explain that there was a pandemic going on. And I wrote this, the first draft of this was completed in March, 2020. Oh, wrote a global pandemic Ooh. to help explain change or actually not the change, why change does not happen. And so um, there and that's are one of the days I looked at him was like, I sleep next to you. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, a lot of little freaky yep. things that who came out you, of that really? book, such yeah. as who got hit the hardest, how, uh, what were some of the side effects like pericarditis, and a lot of the stuff that actually ended up really did happening was actually talked about in the book. So, um, but um, see, and just to show, my husband is extremely smart, and he stays mission focused, and like he's talking all about this medical stuff. Yada yada, right? And <laughs> it's an you can't yada yada that. <laughs> it's an <laughs> educational thriller, and we're driving down the street one day, and he was like, "Someone said it's a mystery thriller," and he was like, "I never thought about that," and I was like, "You killed somebody. We're trying to figure out who it is," <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, okay," and I was like, <laughs> "Yeah." Well, that and, works. <laughs> well, and that's what I tell him. Of course, okay. it's a mystery. I mean, I don't see how you didn't see that it was one. But again, he stays focused on the. So it's really cute. Some days, like he'll have that light bulb go off and be like, "Oh, yeah, it is one of those." So <laughs> it's just so cute. No, <laughs> it makes for real conversations because one conversation is what they learn. Right. The yes. other conversation is about the thriller oh, piece it. of it. Yeah. yeah, it's like so. Uh, <laughs> I have to be ready anytime they go into it. Mostly it's them talking. I, I think that's one thing I learned uh, when people are talking about the books. They talk a lot <laughs> and compliment you and you really did not think about any of the things that they're actually talking about, but they gave you credit for it. And you're just like, oh, really? Sure. Uh, well, I'm glad you caught that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> fascinating. And so... Uh, I was like, I have to hand it to you. That wasn't what was on my mind. Exactly. That's exactly All right. Well, continuing on down the line. Uh, yeah. But first off, um, I need to talk to y'all off air because I can tell y'all a horror story that I physically lived dealing with a bad hospital versus a good hospital and how <laughs> I almost died. So I think everybody's got one of those. Oh, yeah. Mm, yeah. One of those. All right, Doc, have you come up with your pick? Still She's still thinking on it. She's okay. We're going to jump to Jen while Doc keeps thinking because she is an editor. So she, this board, sure. she's seen so much. You're going to make you choose one, huh? 
Yeah, I, I can't. I, and I, I'm with her. I can't really choose one. I mean, obviously, James Dean books are are always on my top. Mm -hmm. um, Nick Clausen, I read recently, and he is about to be an upcoming guest. And I'm actually, I am actually listening to his audio book, uh, Dead Meat, his audio book series, Dead Meat. Mm -hmm. um, but Nick has a an extremely amazing series. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm I I'm also reading Merritt's books, Crawlers. Crawlers. So I, you know, and that's with a Z, right? Yes. There are so many different. I mean, like Nick Clausen, he's got I think five books, and I'm waiting for his sixth book to come out in his um series that I do not remember the name of right now, and I am a terrible person. I do apologize, but I did read the whole thing. It was. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I read it. Well, and of course, well, I put it back. Anyways, hey. it, Nick Clausen was just—he was so good in, in in the series that I did read. That is not dead meat. So okay. not and dead meat. I'll write that not down. dead not meat. Dead. Yeah, gotcha. So far, dead. <laughs> yeah, so far, dead meat's okay. But Nick Clausen is really good. James Dean—he's got uh, two books out right now. I think he's working on his third still. But he's—I really like his story. His story is very. Um, it's very relatable because the people are not like all gun ho preppers. Okay. They're like a couple of people have really just kind of, they kind of fell into a situation. Fine. Yeah. They, they the are thinking on the fly and, and, you know, the guy's kind of a moron and, you know, it's just, it, it's very relatable because it's Fairly like, oh, yeah. relatable. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I think, you know, I really enjoy those authors and, and those books. Um, I, I just, I really have not, I think I've only read one or two books that yeah. were just absolutely cannot finish terrible. And I, I'm not, I don't want to, they've been on our show before and I don't want to put them <laughs> out there. So. Okay. Well, seeing as how you just, you know, brought up, you know, just the ridiculous and all that right there. I've mm. got to throw this one up for consideration. Oh, that's that's hysterical. Nick it's James. laugh out zombie loud apocalypse. funny. What oh. zombie apocalypse? Yeah. Nick Nick Clausen's cadaver series. There oh. you go. There it is. It yeah, when he, word. And when he I'm sent sure. me the book, he also an old sent broad. me this on a piece <laughs> of cardboard. He's so, <laughs> he's so stupid. Hey, We've had him on the show girl. a few times. He's hilarious. Oh, he's awesome. And he's from the UK. Have fun. Yeah, love that we guy. we actually have a lot of people that we know over in the UK on the show. <laughs> we do. It's very and, we're at, yeah. and we've You're got always Doug. watching British comedy. We do like British comedy. You know, and we've got Doug in Scotland. You know, yeah. I mean, yes, okay. and then we Scotland. have um, Bailey Higgins. Higgins from South South was it South America? South Africa. South Africa. South Africa. Africa. Mm -hmm. Africa. So, one of the Souths. I no, mean, I wasn't. But now, <laughs> and now the thing with Bailey, I mean, since we're going to get up, if we're going to go down this rabbit hole, let's just get the flashlights and go. Her <laughs> primordial um, series is freaking cool. Because, I mean, it's like it's that time going back in time into the primordial age of the earth and dinosaurs and just all kinds of craziness going on. It's good stuff. Okay, Doc. Um, she's still <laughs> like, <laughs> Oh, no, I, I I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. She's like, I just can't. I can't get, I can't pick one. Well, just, just throw well, one I'm out trying, there. I, I actually was trying to, to, to find the author's name because it's been a while since really? I read it, but she did a whole series on werewolves that escaped from a, uh, institution where they were you know doing medical experiments on them and wound up in alaska and she is british and she's done some other some other books as well and i'm trying to come up with her name because um they're she's done a bunch of um apocalyptic ones but these are old books i mean it's been a while i it's been 10 or 15 years since i read her stuff uh, well, okay. Well, while Doc is still researching that, yeah. I'm gonna come. I'm gonna. I'm gonna come back to you guys, and I'm gonna ask you the same question. Who would you recommend to us? The Wellers. 
Tara. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Really great. Yeah. (laughs) With that one. Mm -hmm. There's mugs and t-shirts and yeah, go with that. Get the whole collection because it doesn't seem right without it. So yes, that's (laughs) my, my, my pick. Personal personal opinion. No bias. You you got me. You got me at mugs. (laughs) You got me at mugs right here. Um, Where could I find one of these mugs? I have no idea where. So uh, we got them back there. Uh, That door you see, it's right there. Right there. Good Good luck finding it, Jack. So (laughs) verbally tell them instead of showing them. So we got ColsonPlace.com, um, but uh, the mugs we're having set up for uh, when we do author signings for people to do as ra- uh, raffles. Look so they, yeah, but if you want to send us uh, uh, your address, we'll send you a mug, but you have, to, you have to pick the character that you like. So if you go to ColsonPlace.com, you'll see uh, some artwork over there. So either you like Andros, Hazi, uh, KG, and um, Enkidu. But we also got uh, six more drawings, five for the upcoming book that's going to come out too. And again, those drawings are by our daughter, and um, so they're kind of they're kind of cool. Would so, have to make room back here, you know, because right? uh, like. <laughs> well, we like people to read them and tell us which one did you like, and then that's the cup that they get. Um, unless they annoy me and I'm like, okay, you're getting this one. So huh. go and enjoy. So <laughs> Okay. Now what what would be something that would somebody would do that would annoy you just because I'm bad about that? So. It depends what day it is. I mean, it just oh. for, That yeah. is the answer of a real woman right there. <laughs> it depends on what day. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, I could I could die not. Yeah. For me, I, it's I which probably... five minute increment <laughs> is it? I, yeah. I would probably say the only weird thing, I wouldn't say it annoys me. The only weird thing is really? uh, when you're doing an author signing or you're at the booth and then and then someone brings a a a a, a book to you and it's completely outside of your genre that you can't connect with and you're trying to be polite and you just feel awkward and uh you have no context and uh and you're not even sure what you should be saying because you don't know are they recording are they doing anything over here you just don't know and so i would say that's probably the only time i ever get like feel awkward never happened um, to me. but if you're gonna have a good time <laughs> and be passionate you're gonna have me I, I was like, if you're having a good time and just passionate about whatever it is you're talking about you're gonna but what is your book that you recommend so me? one of the weirdest books i ever uh read which i just had a kick okay. out of it but they're called... gonna read it and i don't want them to think you're a weirdo well that's okay it's, it's, <laughs> no we well, already we already you just seen this calm it's, it down uh, <laughs> it's called the fish wielder the fish, fish wielder, wielder. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. the one that you just read. Yeah, I just read it and it's so ridiculous. Um, okay, please tell me he's using a big fish like a sword, much like Monty Python. And that's what I'm looking at. Slapping. It looks like a normal sword. Yeah, there's, he actually has a fish that can't swim. A what? <laughs> <laughs> that's the first thing he told me. It was like wow. midnight. He's reading this book and he's like, this fish can't swim. I'm like, yeah. Oh, so in water, and I'm like, I'm going back to bed. Like, I didn't understand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just rolled over. Even, yeah, it's cute. so ridiculous. It's just like, I don't know if it's good or bad. It's just so ridiculous. It it's just quite worth reading for him. Yeah, it's just entertaining. Um, I don't know. Hey, that's what matters. <laughs> yeah, okay, at the end of the day, I mean, that's what all this is all about. It's about right. being entertaining. Be yeah, entertaining. Like and- say. Yeah, exactly. Because that was something Jeff harped on constantly. He said, you can do yes. whatever you want. He said, just make sure at the end of the day, you remember you're in the entertainment business. Right. Be entertaining. It be doesn't in- matter what you write, mm-hmm. what you produce. Just be interesting. Be something that people kind of grasp to, even if they walk away from it going, what the hell was yes. that? <laughs> but as long as they come back for more, you've succeeded. It's a win, yeah. Yeah, if so you I am, fall asleep right uh, reading your own book, you probably need to work on it. Yeah. <laughs> I, Man. Actually, I actually came up with a writer. Did you find ah, it? As a oh, okay. and, and it's sort of weird, but it's um, I couldn't find the one I was looking for, but I probably did not get it through Amazon. <clears throat> so I, I'd have to dig up an old Kindle and pull out or stuff. But J.T. Sawyer's series, their series are wonderful. 
is. I'm presuming it's her. The series S A W Y E R. Yeah, J T. Okay. J T are the initials, and they're they're they've got really good detail with the military, um, and with what's going on, and they've done. She's done a uh, few. Sorry, I don't know which it is. Uh, <laughs> has done um, uh, zombies and um, has done aliens. They've got a whole series of series, and it is uh, just really they're well written. They 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 follow. They're well edited. Um, and I hardly ever find a grammatical mistake in them, which you know, I'm sitting there reading books looking for grammatical mistakes. Like, ah, 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 the curse of the editor. Yeah, I know. I cannot <laughs> read anything without finding it. And it is just, I have to remember, well, oh yeah, they're, I'm they're not always, editing. I just am supposed to be enjoying this. And so yeah, they're, they're, I mean, there are always going to be mistakes. I mean, even if it's been edited and edited and edited. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, there's some books that after about, 50 or 60 pages it's like i can't even read this there's so many bloody misspellings and yep. so many it's i like, have seen those yeah <laughs> i have seen those these as aren't well. complete sentences they, hurt. they aren't complete they do bad. hurt they do they, they do they oh. hurt you so bad and you're they just do. like i like the soul and that I've, will just ruin the day for me and i'm yes. like no i just can't like mm, i'm done yeah i yes. just, yeah, I just spent three dollars exactly. and still get it yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, okay. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick on him since he ain't here. I'm gonna pick on Mr. Richard Rose. Um, when you get to uh, book two, and I'm assuming you will because you're gonna love book one so much. Okay. <laughs> but for some reason, in book two, he fell in love with one word, and, and constantly boy, kept, using did he it. kept using it over and over again. And he says he's gonna go back, and you know, once he gets caught up, and he's gonna change it or whatever but i don't know I, to me i've become it's endearing at this point <laughs> incredulous everybody's doing incredulous shit. i mean that's that's a pretty cool word to be it honest yeah. to get and, it to fit once maybe twice at most in a book i would use it but not yeah not really. oh god no he's using it at every turn that's a little excessive yeah, well, yeah. incredulous yeah. incredulous incredulous I He's think we got that fancy. word once in the traveler. I do See? think we got it in there. Um, I have to double <laughs> check because I was surprised, like, oh, because uh, someone on a review said this was incredulous. And I was like, I'll was take like, it. Interesting. <laughs> I was like, it was intended to be. So, uh, um, so yeah. yeah, some of the people, they like take this personal offense and you're like, but that's what exactly it was supposed to do. <laughs> so <laughs> I read a book recently and they kept using the same line every couple of chapters. And I'm like, I knew that you already said it, you know? And it was like, in the end, they could have took out a couple of pages without repeating themselves over and over. And I'm like, okay, oh, you just, oh, I oh, want those sad. six pages of life back is what I want. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm hoping to get them when I put my review on it. But oh. yeah, I'm, Go ahead. Well, now, now, have you ever caught him doing that? Yes. And, it, <laughs> said, out. and that's what just when we out. read it out loud. Snatched. I'm like, okay, he turned it with his hand. Now he's looking at his hand. And now he you know, waves his hand. And I'm like, hand, hand, hand. And I'll stop reading. And he'll go, okay. And he'll, he knows what I'm doing. Or, <laughs> it was you know, the luck. <laughs> I'll emphasize the word that I keep hearing over and over. And then it's like, all right, pull our phones, get to the source. I need something better than this and stuff like that. And then he, last time we just read through, there was a word and I'm like, yeah, I don't like it. And he used it again. And then we changed the first one. And then as we read the third line, we had that word and I was like, come on. So we had to keep playing and changing and yeah, it took a minute, but we got through it. But no, we, he does do that. And again, he just pounds out things and then I go back through and that's to, the point. To give you an idea. Um, <laughs> he, he looks so defeated right now. He, no, he takes it to, so to give well. you guys an he idea really on, on the cap in this latest, latest <laughs> book to give you an idea after two re uh, three reviews of two different editors and uh mm -hmm. several reviews on our part on this last review we still sent 35 pages of edits back to the uh 
uh, to the, the publisher uh, publisher to doing the copy layout because when you see the layout then you find additional things mm -hmm. and um, I got a state because I found most of them yeah but a lot of it is just also just story flow and believe it or not I spent a lot of time taking stuff out it's like it's true it's like don't need it to explain the audience doesn't care he's um, really good about that because he'll put something in there that made sense the first round and then he's like does that even progress the story does that e is it even worth mentioning that at this point like do they even need to talk about that right now and he'll just you know scrap it or maybe save it for later or something else but he's really good about pulling things out he's like that that doesn't help so let's just move on like he wants just the point of the story and I appreciate that because again, I want those six pages back from the other guy who wrote this book <laughs> and I can't get that. So that really works for me as far as a reader goes. Hey. Man, I'm going to tell you, you guys have got me so excited about checking out what you put together because I mean, I, 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 I can tell from you. just talking to you guys, y'all have put a lot of passion into this. Y'all didn't, <laughs> I mean, this right here is why I love getting to do this show is Definitely. to meet all these different authors and their process and what they've gone through. And now, granted, coming up after the turn of the new year, we're going to have another couple on that are both writers and kind of work together on things. I'm going to have to watch that. <laughs> this, it's, it's so exciting. Now, are you guys familiar with the Books of Horror group? on facebook um that's one to get into um yes but, um but heather and um uh, josh doherty they have recently gotten married and everything and they've collabed well she was a writer before and he was a writer before and now they're together yeah. and they're working together on things and helping each other out yeah, and that's why that's why i started the show with the how many times have you damn near hit divorce you know yeah. like yeah yeah, we, yeah, it's, this is his baby. This is his project. This is his dream. He's always wanted it. And like Jen said earlier, if it never sold a copy, I'm fine with that. I am perfectly happy with it sitting on the shelf and I have the only copy of the book. And, but he wants this to happen and he comes up with his ideas and I fully support it. And now it has become us collaborating together. Um, but this is his dream and I'm more than happy to help him, you know, meet it fulfill it so uh, it's it's all him it really is and and saying that doing this Kantara because there's gonna be seven books and he'll start telling me about it and I'm like don't ruin it don't ruin it like I want to read it myself and it I want no spoilers and he's always like I know how number seven is gonna be and I'm like okay but don't tell me don't, don't tell, tell me, me. <laughs> don't tell me what happens to this character because I want to read it just as much as it, you know, a regular customer wants to read the book and yeah. I have so much fun with it too. And it kind of hinders him because he wants to bounce ideas off of me. And I'm like, not until you write it. I don't want to, I don't want to hear anything about it. So I, I do restrict him on some level, but again, why he has already three and four sitting over there for me to, you know, start reading and looking at it. But I'm a fan. And, and again, I look at him and I'm like, that came out of you. Like you wrote all that. <laughs> And it's just amazing. And again, it's his dream. And I'm so, so impressed with what he, what he has done so far with these characters and writing. So he's, he's really good at it. So I'm proud of him. You guys are the dynamic duo. I just love it. <laughs> I think you guys are just totes adorbs. And I, I'm so happy that you guys have that connection, that teamwork connection. And I love the synergy. The synergy is what catches me. Yes. Oh, thank you. So you're you guys are, <laughs> <laughs> your woman is selling you. <laughs> she, she is like definitely, it. yes. <laughs> like I said, she sells herself for it. I mean, the, the, uh, a lot of this stuff, a lot of people get a kick out of. It's like, I remember what she adds. Yeah. yeah I don't. Uh, significant. I don't. And so. there is stuff that, that people just get a kick out of. And it's, uh, I have to remind her, it's like, that was you. That was all you. Uh, <laughs> probably one of the uh, one of the biggest fight scenes in the, the in the part one. A lot of people get a kick out. That was actually fleshed out by her. I mean, it was like an additional couple of pages of fleshing out. 
So it, it's not like a, a small little word here. This is truly fleshing this out, acting out the scenes and the full choreography that gets into all of this. And then I'm like, why didn't you add this? Why didn't you add that? When I read it, and he's like, because you didn't tell me to. Like, you didn't have that thought. I just we did. It. <laughs> so I'm like, write it down. Oh, so, yeah. So, yeah. So, no, it is so cute. Time. I just love it. Absolutely. All right, well, well, guys, earlier today, uh, Anthony threw up something. It was a really good idea because obviously, again, thank you guys for jumping in to fill in. We we're supposed to have uh, Kelvin Allison mm -hmm. on today. He's sick as a dog. His kid's this sick as a dog. Better. You did good. So, Don't worry. so man, you guys good. jumping in has been absolutely yeah. fantastic. But Anthony had suggested, well, you know, if we don't get a guest for the day, maybe we can at least recap what 2023 has been since we okay. are at the end of the year. So... Let's start with you guys as the guest. Um, how what what have been some of your accomplishments, your your losses? Um, you know, recap your year for us. So 2023, my wife had a tumor removed from her head mm. uh, earlier this year. So I blame a lot of things that I might do wrong on my tumor. So, so yeah. she had a tumor Good removed, move. and <laughs> medically I had uh, about four veins uh, fixed in my legs. So that's from Ow. medical. Blood clots. Um, we had, I know those. I was in a bad accident a couple of years ago, and finally we're getting things better. So um, the uh, accomplishments, uh, obviously publishing Kantara the Traveler, it has won seven book awards yep. um, nice so far uh from two yeah. uh two from uh speak up talk radio and five from book fest um including uh so that was a pretty exciting it was pretty exciting yeah. thing for that so um i would probably say it got that was some of these that us working together because the other <laughs> books, by the way, uh, they had five total combined, but this book by itself has seven. So she says that's because of her. I, I wasn't can't a part of the other books. Yeah, like I just needed to, uh, you know, be. My book has made seven awards, and my <laughs> book has <laughs> done all that that he just talked about. So yeah. So that's uh, that's been uh, the uh, couple of the wonderful accomplishments this year so we've been pretty exciting and that was that was a thrilling day when we found that out yes right, and so, also, so, go ahead no 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 you go ahead oh no just to add on to our yays and nays um four kids graduated four kids moved out <laughs> so empty nesters so you can throw that in the yay nay area. So there's Isn't a lot it of wonderful. Highlights. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? Being and we're an having nester? so much more fun. Um, so yeah, that's been super exciting. Uh, I got my new cat. So yay! And hey. she's a bangle, and she's amazing. And I my named daughter her. Got her for her. Yes, she got her for me. She's my emotional support animal. Um, but she's a bangle, and she looks so beautiful. And uh, I named her Nanami because I love anime and. Uh, that's one of my favorite characters in a million books. Um, and he has me. And let's see, what else did you do that was great? Um, yeah, that wraps it up. Um, and now we're sharing the one um, PS5 console because we we typically game in different rooms. And now we're using the same one. And we hand the controller back and forth. So we are learning to share. Um, oh. So, yeah. Oh, that's so, sweet. So, yeah. So, so All right. To follow up off that, then, what are your hopes and dreams for 2024? What do you, what do you want to accomplish next year? Uh, for hopes and dreams for 2024, uh, 2020, uh, our son, uh, obviously, uh, he is a he's completing his training in the military. So we his what branch would be great army for me. So army, obviously, being supportive of them. Um, uh, publishing the captain, uh, getting the audio book out. But uh, uh, to me, I think this is the exciting part to actually keep that series going and uh, uh, the captain and uh, getting these books out. Um, and really, it's just uh, get on another cruise, have more time, yeah. spend more time together, have fun together. That's what we're really doing. But we want to be at a several more author events, so we want to see yes. people out there and come to the booth because we're going to be going to all the other author booths and uh, uh, supporting them as well. Yeah, Dude. better health, more cons, and more more cruises. 
and to utilize my couch more. It's very neglected and I'd like to spend more time on it. So, and I can do that while editing my books, but I you really, sure I can. love my couch and it just needs me. So yeah. <laughs> I 24 plans. love your thought process <laughs> on this whole thing. I am a hundred percent behind that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, here I'm going to give you a real quick suggestion. Um, yeah. it throw together a cryptid based novella, at least something, oh. you know, short, you can knock out real quick and get your butts to the, uh, Bigfoot festival in Townsend, Tennessee. Okay. Where's you will and then because as long as you have at least one thing out there that's cryptid based i mean even if it's just arts and crafts whatever you can get a booth and set up there and it's in a big open field it's pretty the mountains are all around you it's gorgeous out there you okay. will sell stuff like crazy because last year alone there were over thirty thousand people that wandered through all that uh, me and Richard, we would we don't take count of books like one, two, three. We do them in fives wow. because he's popping them off like that. So do that. Get to that convention for sure. And hell, hopefully you get set up near us. You know, we don't yeah. hang out and party, you know, have a good time. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So that's I, I, that's a cheat code I throw out there to everybody. Just come up with pick a cryptid because, God, there's hundreds of them. Right. And write something and get out there for that thing because it will put your books in front of a lot of faces. Yeah, because we're talking about doing that and then that following Sunday, we're talking about going to Dollywood and doing roller coasters. There you go. Not me. I'm not roller coaster and I'm just oh, you're going. getting on one. I'm not getting on a roller <laughs> getting coaster. On one. You're out give of your me mind. the name give me the name of the um of that uh the convention that you were just talking about the cryptic convention uh the big it's a it's bigfoot festival the bigfoot festival okay yeah, yeah I, and you have, you have talked to me about it but i it's keep so forgetting good. it's amazing oh well the first year that i went i'm just throwing this in there because well since richard's not here to complain about us going over because he does that. I've been bringing him up a lot today. <laughs> See on my mind so much. About it. You better be careful or you're going to summon him like Beatles. I, I, exactly. <laughs> but um, the first year that I went, they had, you know, live music. And one of the bands that played there was a cover band for Kiss. Oh, wow. But they were little people. Oh, and wow. I'm telling you, full makeup, full gear, the whole nine yards. We didn't get to actually go over and watch the show because we were kind of at the, you know, the tent doing our thing. Mm -hmm. But we could hear them, you know, from where we were. If you'd have walked up and said, "Hey, Kiss is playing over there," I'd have believed you. Really? Like they were that good, and, but they were called Mini Kiss. Mini Kiss is the, is the name of their band. They were oh, freaking fantastic. They were little people. They were, and they were rocking and oh, rocking. I've heard, I've heard some of that. Them, uh, group. Some of them right. uh, knockoff groups like that are really, really good. All right. Well, first Jen. of all, hold on a minute. I got a, I got a shout out to uh, Dutch Bros. These guys. Huh? Are they any good? Are they any good? I've never I them. well, my friend got me hooked on um the vanilla chai tea with almond milk and cinnamon sprinkles. I don't know what it's called. I just tell them that that's what I want. That's so they about. screwed up my drink. I, I was getting a free one because I had bought enough. I spent a hundred dollars or whatever. <laughs> and I bought enough <laughs> to get a free one. But um, so they screwed up. I ordered two and they screwed up my two drinks and they gave me two more. Good and enough. with the right. So shout out to them. That's why I'm all hopped up on the chai. I see. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they they really and they're really cool. They uh they did a really good job at taking care of me. But I really like that drink. That is the only drink I drink from there. I'm not a coffee person. All right. Well, Jen, I'm gonna stick with you. Stick Tell with us me. About, let's talk about your accomplishments this year. <laughs> oh yes. Okay. Um <laughs> <laughs> reluctantly. I, I with an incredulous in. look. Get yeah, I turned in two books. Um, I got two books turned in and published this year. Uh, my first one was published in 2022. So yeah, this year I did two books because Stacy and Aaron, although Aaron is not going to be out for 
Um, it's on pre-order right now. It's not going to be released until the 9th of January, but, um, oh, let's see. What have I done? Uh, what have I done? Oh, God. I'll say you went from Arizona to Toledo, Ohio, back to Arizona, um, 911 center to 911 center. And now I just, I'm done with 911. I transferred to records and, I'm done with records now officially, and I am now going to be a transportation officer for ICE, so ICE. <laughs> which is very exciting. Um, I'm super stoked about that. I have decided to um, rebrand all of my writing. I went from Jenna Motto. I got married in June. I went from Jenna Motto to Jennifer Folk. And yep. now my author name is JL Folk. And... I rebranded my, I make chapsticks and salves and stuff like that. I rebranded all that stuff to become a survivor product that I now sell on my new website, jlfolkauthor.com. And I actually came up with a pretty ingenious marketing scheme where I will put them in um, ammo cans. Cute. Yeah, that is and make cute. a little make a little basket and it's survivor products. So I like and it. Yeah. So I thought that was pretty cute, you know. That's um, cool. It is pretty cool. I, I'm actually I can't wait to get everything put together so I can take pictures and post it up and stuff like that. And it's gonna be a big sticker on their survivor products. And you know, it's like salves that'll if you have eczema or if you get a mosquito bite or if you have some weird strange itch don't put it in anything <laughs> just on stuff but no touching yeah <laughs> no <laughs> you can put it on there and it's all natural products it's really cool so i mean that's pretty much i've just i've been busy trying to rebrand and remarket myself and wow. getting out there well, well, i need that. to talk to you about that cuz i'm going to need some of that okay <laughs> my wife some of that well, see, Jen, this this is the byproduct of you know coming on this show and yeah. subsequently blowing our minds and being and bullied, a -host. being bullied, <laughs> being bullied to author. Yeah, well, well, well look at Jen now. Badass <laughs> author. All right, so now the hard part's going to be picking the next one I want to hear from because I see three people who oh, wait, have I actually. Do have, I do also have three additional. I have four total works in progress for this year. Wow. Yeah, you're, so, you're not busy. You're not. No. I got time. Your couch yeah. is going to miss you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I do it on my couch. Do you? <laughs> yes. Oh. My couch does not miss my butt okay. at all. <laughs> <laughs> it, it knows great. it intimately. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I suddenly want to be a couch? Sorry. <laughs> 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 Yeah, you know. Oh, man. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and just go with the easy response for this and go ladies first. Kristen, yep. what have you done this year? Mm. Well, I, <laughs> I've just submitted my third poetry book, which will be released on January 1st. Nice. Uh, super excited about that. Um, uh. I got invited to do a short story for an anthology, so I'm really excited about that. Um, for 2024, I'm hoping to graduate college uh, as I will be taking my last three uh, courses for my degree. Um, and then, of course, I'm working on a few projects with some short stories uh, with Jack and Jen and a few other people are in that. And then uh, me and Bobby Murphy are finishing up our psychological erotic thriller. Um, really excited about that. And then of course <laughs> I have- Me too. No. <laughs> it, is, it is very, <laughs> he, you know what? It's very exciting. You guys, want, I've, I've read some of what she and Bobby have come up with and I uh -huh. had sweat beads. Like, <laughs> yeah, needed a fan right here needed a fan i will, I will and, admit, and my I, poor husband that night you poor thing I, I will admit the, that the part that you read jack um i think i i i really enjoy writing erotic scenes 
and I found that I'm really good <laughs> at it, um, especially coming from like from like a man's perspective. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, and that's gonna be a completely different. Like, sure. It's gonna be a whole <laughs> new genre, a it's whole gonna, new genre. She's gonna get in. Um, it's gonna be so much fun. Um, <laughs> I I will make sure if you like, I can send you um a copy, and you can start editing and proofreading if you like. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, yeah, wait, are you talking to, to me or Jeff? To... Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. To you. You say, yeah, I get yeah, a copy, yeah. right? Yes. Okay, Jack can edit it. That's fine. I just want to. Oh talk. no, no, no! I was gonna say, uh, me trying to edit no. like romantic he won't make it through the and... book. No, make it through the book. I'll be asleep she, with, she a, looks with a at, numb if hand. My wife reads this and looks at me and goes, <laughs> "Yeah, I'll make sure they work out. Yeah, I'll make sure the scenes work. No worries. Yeah, yeah. Me, me, Bobby, we can. I'll, I'll message y'all later. So we acted out this we scene. Acted. <laughs> we acted, and this scene. one wasn't exactly yeah comfortable. Nobody turns much. that way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Somebody level, threw out a hip. What level of athleticism are we talking about? <laughs> now because yeah. it's high five. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Eat your Wheaties. <laughs> Okay, now it gets it gets tougher as I narrow it down to the final <laughs> two that I want to hear from here and, and get away from that before I start getting <laughs> sweat beads again. <sighs> I think it's three because I think we've got you too, Jack. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Mm, it is okay. Three. He does it every week. <laughs> because Angel's been at it for a minute. We're going to save him for last because Anthony is fresh, 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 fresh. <laughs> Anthony, <laughs> brother, break down 2023 for us, man. How was your year? It's been crazy, man. It's been a crazy roller coaster ride. Uh, starting at the beginning of the year, we kind of uh, was finishing up Bad Wabbit, the first comic book uh, of my series. Uh, we had the Kickstarter that you guys remember. It fully funded. Got my uh, sweatshirt. Hell, it was fun, man. It was fun. Um, I'm actually currently putting together the second Kickstarter uh, for the next book. Um, I mean, it was just crazy. I did a lot of writing, which, uh, you know, Chris kind of put me on to writing. Uh, Chris Philbrook, that is. Um, and he, I'm, I'm, about to start book five of the uh, Bad Wabbit series, and I'm currently working on uh, doing the Colony Lost book uh, by Chris Felbrook. I'm turning it into... I had to make sure I had it upside down. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, I, uh, I'm working on putting that into a uh, graphic novel form, uh, so that's going to be cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I, as you guys know, I've got uh, a lot of health issues and uh, those have been a challenge, uh, this year, but I think I've overcome them gracefully. Um, yes. and in the process, uh, I've worked a lot on launching my brand and with the release of bad wabbit number one, we successfully started DMW comics. Uh, it's in multiple stores locally. And uh, it's on Amazon Digital, and I think, I think I figured oh. out the physical copy. For the record, I am waiting for some callbacks. I've made okay. some calls, but I obviously the little teenage kid at the counter can't help me, so I'm waiting to hear back. But oh. and that's the poster of it in the background. Uh, yeah, um, that's, that's the cover. Yeah. Um, that's the cover. Um, okay. So, and when this. you say locally, where is locally? Austin, Texas. Austin, uh, Texas. So if you come to Austin, you can look like if you Google comic book stores in Austin. In Austin, uh, my comic book is in like the first five uh, that come ones up. listed. So the the biggest ones in Austin. Um, I've been doing successful uh, signings. Uh, Chris Philbrook actually came down here in September. Uh, which was incredible because I love that guy. He's an amazing author, an amazing dude all around. And he came and we did some signings together and it was fun. It was really cool. You know, it's it's surreal to have my favorite author in my house, you know, helping me with my project. Right. And it's like, all right. Well, I, w I want a uh, quick uh, reminder here. Um, you made him a special dinner for his first day there. What did you make? 
uh, chicken and dumplings. My version of chicken and dumplings. Which so is? Is it which is what exactly? Well, everything chicken? in my chicken and dumplings. Uh, <laughs> like most people, they you have that like semi watery chicken and dumplings with the little bitty dumplings and the you know the stringy chicken. I do chunks, like everything's nice. chunks, okay. uh, and I do whole biscuits instead of little like for the dumplings. Okay. So each dumpling is about that big. And I so okay. I do whole baby carrots. I think we need to take a trip to Austin. <laughs> he said he, he loves to chicken out. and dumplings. He oh, really yeah. does. Whole, so that's what he's Whole baby carrots, uh, whole celery, like almost like big pieces of celery. Onion. Wow. Uh, like it's a meal. <laughs> I call it a lumberjack chicken and dumplings. Yeah, yeah, yeah Steven, Steven's getting perma grin His over there. He's just like, mm. it's great, man. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, uh, thing I, i've been you know staying above ground that's a good you know thing with my degenerative heart disease it's uh definitely a good thing to stay above ground uh but yeah i mean we got book two on the way book one's out uh i'm waiting i'm actually that's why i keep i don't know if you guys have seen me i keep checking out the window uh, i'm actually waiting for the proof copies from amazon to come uh Ooh, yeah. so every time i hear a door slam i'm looking out the window like is that, <laughs> is that them <laughs> I thought uh, you were trying to escape, like you know, uh, <laughs> get to the window. <laughs> but yeah, 2023 has been a really good year for me. And yes. uh, you know, my wife, she's come around when I first started all this comic book stuff, she was just thinking I was good, you know, she didn't understand where I was going with it. Mm -hmm. And uh when I first made uh Toxic Pig, I showed him to her and she just was like that's silly that's i was like watch i'm gonna make him something i'm gonna make something of him and she just kind of laughed it off but now you know here he is uh and everybody and loves him and, that, oh, and everybody awesome. loves him it's that's so awesome. funny how you'd make these characters and the character that's the main character for some reason ends up not being everybody's favorite right and it's like but he's awesome. I love that. Movie. You know, You're missing and, the point. Yeah, yeah. Toxic pig, he's a cute little pig in a gas mask. Who doesn't like that? Yeah. <laughs> so. it, it is strange how the characters you don't think uh, is going to be popular are the ones that do become popular. And yeah. Get, yeah. It's like with Kentara, what took me by surprise was the character of Andros was popular among so many people. And I'm like, yeah. really? <laughs> okay i gotta ask you because i trolled your facebook page before we came on here <laughs> you got a naked guy on there <laughs> who is oh. that from your um it, it's a drawing it looks like a comic book drawing and okay. it looks like he's like shooting oh, out of the side oh, yeah i'm like you have naked people on your facebook yeah there's uh, <laughs> there there is yeah, there's, i mean uh, i saw scene. i saw man scene. butt i'm just saying <laughs> yeah. 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 Cartoon man butt. i didn't draw it I was just like, it looked amazing i was yeah. just like and again what this is that found at a at fan expo a yeah. fan expo and we were like hey and they read it and this is what they produced because i never he kept saying it's a it's like a manga and i was like okay looks like a book to me and then when she drew it i was like oh i get it it could be um but yeah, yeah go ahead explain your your man but that that would be the Facebook. character of uh, <laughs> mati and uh, a critical character in the uh in the series um okay one of the things that's kind of interesting about the series is we wrote um you look at that i take a lot of liberties with the prologue and the epilogues right the prologues and the epilogues are in third person whereas the main uh it really does. The, the the main book itself is in written in first person from cage's there's, point of view here's the button but the it. uh um but <laughs> i try to write the epilogue and prologues where you could just read those too because that's like it's almost like a marvel universe approach to it all yeah. okay and, uh it's a way to kind of think about it and so i try to put some of the most exciting parts into the uh epilogues so um to catch your and attention I, and draw you in but the right. butt will do it too so. yeah the yeah. butt will do it too but uh, yeah we had i, I got it called. did I it got, worked i got woken up in the middle of the night because a fan called up because they were pretty excited about the epilogue and they wouldn't shut up about it so that was that that was uh good and so we were pretty excited about that well, that's cool yeah. that's awesome yeah. so that's why yeah. there's a butt yeah the, i wondered i was butt. just like what's the deal I, with the man butt yeah. Well, I, I didn't envision it that way at all. Uh, that was the girls. 
Don't point at me. I didn't do that. <laughs> no, that, right. man butt. that was a girl that came up with so the So what he's so, saying is he doesn't remember putting the man butt in there, but he yeah. is going to blame you for it. Exactly. It's a favorite. <laughs> so there you I go. I mean, teamwork. <laughs> right. This is just the character uh, because there's a more powerful being and it's making right. him humble to remember that, you know, you're just human. Stay over there until, yeah. you know. Calm and, down. Yes, and at some calm, point he calm gives, your naked man butt down. Exactly, and what is it? He <laughs> gives him his pants to block the wind from his nether regions, or something, is how he wrote it. And Shrinkage so, is a bitch. <laughs> so, it and is. That's it. With the first time oh, I read I it, I was like, "Really?" But it's that's a, a, it's but one that of those a, books, but no. But that was not. the last <laughs> thing he got was his pants. You know, right. he's oh. getting his clothes back, but it? the pants are the very last thing he gets Again, back. Again, to keep him so, humble, apparently. So. So, I mean, if there's I a there. way to do it, having right. shrinkage <laughs> happening while you're talking to somebody he, is definitely humbling, I would he assume. He repeatedly says how cold it is and wherever he is. So I'm like, uh, okay, that, makes sense. That, will, I, that will get you to shut up real quick. Yes, it will. All right, I guess I the ultimate it. question on that, though, is can you bounce a quarter off one of them ass cheeks, <laughs> you know? In this photo, maybe, but Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're coming to the main event right here. My guy that is a machine, a freaking yeah. machine. This dude's pumping out 2,000 plus words a day wow. on his on days. It's, it is. It's just sir. sickening. This just Here on my is. nerves. Angel <laughs> Ramon, my liege, the one and yeah, only guy. Angelus Maximus. I bow to you. How was your 2023, my brother? Ah, uh, 2023. It was excellent. Excellent. I finished this particular series. I finished. Uh, Jack was you. It's a, it's a, it's a NATO RPG. I know you might not be familiar with NATO RPG. It's like a, like a video game. It's like a, it's like a, 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 a book that takes place like in a video game environment. Okay. And you know, in, in this particular series, the guy has to build many cities in the, in the, in ancient Greece, in the Minoan Empire. You know, I'm a huge mystery. which you know, was that. brilliant by you, by the way. The fact that you used the Minoan Empire, which really was just kind of a almost a blip on the radar when you yes. really look at history total, and you expanded it that was, thing. It was in 1910. It was only discovered by 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 uh, archaeologists in the 1910, 19 So it's a very it's not a it's not a very old uh, discovery. But the, the but the but the series that really took my series that really took off was of course the wonderful Pina Canals and Wax, yes. which is uh, my creature horror series that takes place in Puerto Rico. Yeah, okay. take them. In 1985, I'm just so amazed you pumped out so many of those. Yeah, so <laughs> the machine fast. Wow. And what's so amazing said- about the book? Is that it all started off as a as a short story that I wrote I wrote for a magazine with uh, Derek Barton. Yep. Yeah. You know, unfortunately the magazine went Benny up, but but then I told Jack, listen, I'm having too much fun with the story. I'm going to make it into a novel. I'm going to make it into his own universe. Yeah. Of course, I said, yeah, I'll go. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> cool. And, and you, know? you released the first one when? Uh, June thirtieth. June thirtieth. And by the way, you're already on book three. That's book three right there wow. in my freaking hands. Book three. Wow. This dude is now just... book four. My homie. <laughs> that one is coming out in uh, maybe May, February, early March. And I have to say the book, the book series did I mean, exponentially, exponentially better than I thought. It's all sold over 900 copies this year already, the series. Wow. You know, that's that, freaking that, awesome. Congratulations. That is fantastic. Wow. Yeah. He's an animal. Else. He markets so and, well. So if you ever and, have uh, any marketing questions, he'd be a good one to ask. Wow. Oh, yeah. And, and book four is already close to 40 pre-orders, which is, which is crazy considering that, you know, when you get to book three or book four, it's already it's really hard to get people to invest right. before because you know it's diminishing returns. Now, unfortunately, it wasn't all perfect. I, on a personal level, I kind of had to take a step back from everything. Unfortunately, uh, I I suffer from a natural disaster PTSD, so 
you know, unfortunately, that's been my my biggest Achilles heel, so to say. So mm-hmm. I've had that would be I've kind of had to stick. We discover myself. And right now, I have to say, 2023 has been a wonderful year in that aspect. You know, yeah, I've been. Yeah. And uh, 2024, obviously, with 2024, I hope to release uh, Pinky Canals and Wax 4 will be coming out. And I'll be coming out with a new, a new series uh, with Ken of Frogs and Reptiles. Oh. Well. And, you know, yeah, Angel has found a love for creature horror, and I'm all about like it. it. I'm I'm down for it, man. Absolutely yeah, so. down for it. And also for 2024, I hope to come to the states, uh, visit the states as well. I hope to take a trip out there. For the yeah, summer. well, I need I need to take you to purpose? Mary's place for breakfast. Hey, sure. I need to come out there and eat some some Puerto Rican. Yeah, yeah. Come out here as well. I I mean, I would I would say Jack should come out, but. But to get Jack out, you got to kidnap him. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much, or at least put me on a boat because I ain't getting on a plane. I was gonna say you got to knock him out if you want it to be a short plane trip. Really? Yeah, yeah, like B. A. Baracus and A. Team. Yeah, you're gonna have to, <laughs> you know, crank <laughs> my. Showing ass. your <laughs> age. <laughs> uh, my my beard showed that. That's why I shaved the damn thing off. People still have to guess because now there's twenty year olds that have gray hair and yes. they do it on purpose. And right. Uh, yeah. Oh, natural. There you go. Yeah. And one, yeah, one more thing. Uh, between all my books, I've sold over eighteen hundred copies this year. Between all my books. Nice. Uh, nice. Uh, trying, trying to, I guess, kind of really, I easily one of my best years. I've been one publishing. Day I hope I can do that. And I've been publishing for seven years since twenty seventeen. Amazon. Amazon. Well, guys. Yeah. I just want to say before we start wrapping this thing up. Did I, you say I, Amazon? Yeah, he's here, the Amazon guy. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> she got her face lit up. She was like, Amazon. <laughs> Waiting for like seven packages. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> you are so like my girl. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little I'm in love with your happy. wife, Steven. <laughs> hey Angel, I just want to ask you a question real quick. Do you drink the Mama Wana because you're their local? Is that like a drink that you can't like do you have that well for us it's made it's, ba- it's basically a pina canada that's no good to us okay the, the, yeah pina canadas and uh the one with the so you can have it you can have a virgin without uh rum but i might give it rum and whipped cream mm-hmm. yeah. it's so good everything better with whipped cream everything yeah good. i want a pina colada yeah, on everything. Uh, yeah. It sounds I'll like we're drinking our food. lunch today. Oh, that sounds good. Yep. Apparently, Amazon wants something. Okay, let me go see. Go ahead. You can finish it. I no, it. Yeah, she she can't wait. She cannot wait. She's got to go see what the hell <laughs> is over there. She was so excited about the package. <laughs> go, man. I'm I mean, like, like, forget the show. My we got spirit Amazon. animal. Oh, well, <laughs> I do the same thing. <laughs> but yeah. She's- yeah, she's pretty good. No, this this has been fun. What about you, Jack? What's uh, what's a big accomplishment this year? Oh, a boy, decided uh, to do it this time. Thank you. Know, yeah. Yeah. Come on, all right. Jack. We know well, you did it. All right. Well, I have a short story published in Word Peddler magazine and is also in the the defunct magazine uh, with Malice, which is the first place it was published, called Domino, which is a crossbreed of my cat. And our hairless chihuahua. So I wound up with a hairless cat. This literally came from a homework assignment that was given to me by DJ Cooper, Jeff Thompson, Jen, and um, Dungeon Dan. And I was given five things that had to be in the story. And so I came up with this uh, 4,811 words. Why do I remember that? And I created a story where there's this special hairless cat that shows up on a guy's doorstep and the guy reluctantly takes him in and winds up better for it because the damn cat saves his life, which is essentially a flip on the man's best friend thing because he gets attacked by a dog based creature, dog man. And the cat basically saves his freaking life. So I got that published, so technically I'm an author, even though I still don't feel like one. <laughs> um, 
So I got that done, and uh, most recently, the new Word Peddler magazine, um, we had a tribute for an author that we lost recently, uh, Javin Bonds, author of the Still Alive series, which is fantastic. If you want to laugh out loud and get grossed out at the same time, Still Alive by Javin Bonds is the place to go. We'll warn you, he does shoot people in the penis an awful lot. <laughs> oh, then what, what was that again? Let me definitely get that. Uh, still Alive. <laughs> In fact, me and Kristen, this year, we got to have lunch in person at Opry Mills Mall with the narrator of that series, Sean Saltzman, who is so freaking awesome as he's a human a cool being. Dude. He's great. He's just, he's down to earth. He's so cool, but he's so good at doing voices. Another narrator, like if you have a series coming up. That's another one I'd recommend for you to uh, reach I out to and contact. I how many takes he had to do to get those scenes. Like, <laughs> he was cringing or laughing during them. <laughs> well, now, I, I, can't, I would say he was probably laughing. <laughs> well, I, I, I can't remember exactly what the affliction was that Javin had, but it, it left him <laughs> wheelchair-bound, mostly blind, mostly deaf. Everything he recorded or it wrote was done through dragon naturally speaking and i have heard some really funny stories about him like yelling at dragon because it wasn't understanding his speech you know because he was having issues and him being southern that didn't help either. did not help yeah you know so this thing was just totally jacking everything up that he did but if i had to like some 2023 up for me in a nutshell it's basically has been a continuation of everything i've gotten to do so far like this right here this You're i get doing to do great this and i'm i'm literally i drive a forklift for a living this that's what i do to make my money this cool. is just so cool to get to hang out with everybody and do things and meet so many cool people like you guys who we have just fallen in love with which is why the show is still going because we can't just freaking let you go yet because we got you in our clutches <laughs> but this has been so much fun hanging out with all you guys yes. i have had the time of my life i love doing these shows i love hanging out with my friends who i would have never met had it not been for Javin, had it not been for Jeff, uh, Jeff Thompson, who we mentioned her, we also lost this year. Those were the two big hits to the heart we took. Yeah. And well, actually, I got a third, uh, Mary Rourke. She's not a writer, she's just a fan, big reader. And yeah. she passed away this year. So, you know, heavy hearts uh, for all that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But guys, I've had the time of my life getting to do this. I met Kristen through this. I met Anthony through this. I met Angel through this. Jen, you guys, Richard, Doc, so many cool people. And I have had a blast. I hope you guys have had a blast. Um, viewers, watchers, I hope you all have enjoyed everything. We're still trying to grow. We're still trying to get bigger and better and all that. But it is time to do the thing. So we're going to start right off the rip with Kristen Benson. Where can everybody find you? So you can find me on Amazon under uh, with my works uh, within her thoughts by Kay Vincent. You can also find me on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram, TikTok, and Threads, which is associated to Instagram. Um, and of course, you can find me here every Saturday at one p.m. Central Time. Fantastic. Well, real quick, Angel, before you run away, where can everybody find you? Yep, I got to help my mother. So, yeah, you can find me on Amazon. You can find me every Saturday with these mobley, mobley magnificent bastards. <laughs> you can find me on the Witten Undead Facebook group. And you can find me on Patreon. And that's pretty much it, guys. All right, dude. We'll get back to work. Go take care of your bombs, and let's see how many damn books you put out next year. Yeah, guys. All right, moving on around the line. Guess time I'm going to go ladies first again. Jen, where can everybody <laughs> find the group? Um, my series is the group series. Um, you can find me on Amazon. You can find me at my new 
uh, website, JL folk, F O U L K author.com. Um, you can also find me on angry Eagle publishing, which is actually the main reason that we're here as well, along with Javin, uh, mm-hmm. D Cooper owner of angry Eagle publishing. She is awesome. Um, yes, she is, but that's where you can, you know, I'm, I'm, I work with her, uh, for my books, with my books published by her, by angry, angry Eagle publishing. And, um, you can find me on Facebook, JL folk, F O U L K. <laughs> you can also find me, um, I don't know, pretty much anywhere. I just don't you can call me anything really too. And I, just as long as I'm not late for dinner, I'll be, I'll <laughs> get right at you. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, bad wabbit. Where can everybody find your delicious awesomeness? <laughs> well, right now you can go to dmwcomics.com. Uh, it's got a lot of awesome stuff on there. Uh, you can get the digital copy on Amazon. There's a link on my uh, dmwcomics.com. Uh, you can click on that and uh, it'll take you to that. Um, hopefully by the end of the day, I'll have a link on there uh, for physical copies that will take you directly to the link uh, on Amazon as well. Um, you can find me on Facebook under DMW Comics. Uh, there's uh, merch. You can find that stuff. And we already know it looks awesome. Yes, it does. uh, (laughs) So, um, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. I do this on on Saturdays as often as possible. Um, And I have Castro's Comic Book Corner that I do uh, where I do basically what Jack does. But I interview people uh, specifically uh, entwined in the indie comic book industry and I talked to them about their uh, comics and what got them into comics and so forth and so on. And uh, yeah, it's it's uh, that's what I do. So dnwcomics.com, go check it out. You can find merch, everything on there. So fucking sweet, man. <laughs> I just love it. Well, Stephen, Mary, my God, thank you guys for saving <laughs> the day to end our year correctly, you know, with another fantastic set of authors and yes you're both authors mary (laughs) (laughs) so get over that but guys where where can can we find find you (laughs) we are we're on i guess you call it x uh (laughs) so uh we're there at uh author s well we're also on tiktok um we are on facebook and we are also on linkedin but uh we're also at colsonplace.com, C-O-U-L-S-O-N place.com. Mm-hmm. So um, and that's where we can be found. And then obviously we're going to try to uh, make it to more author conventions. So we're supposed to go to FinCon yep. here in Dallas on in February, February 23rd, mm-hmm. 24th, and 25th. So um, if you're in the neighborhood, come see us there. Yes. Road trip, Anthony. Right. Oh, oh. <laughs> So, man, that is you. that is so cool, guys. And it's we don't usually have shows that just keep going like this. Usually, Sorry. it's like we get down to that last like <laughs> ten minutes. No, no, that is this the is ultimate excellent. fucking compliment. Yeah, this is <laughs> like, it's it's the end of year special. It's, yeah, it's the end of the year. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, nobody We're looked just... at their watch once this whole time. <laughs> no, and that's the funny thing about it. It wasn't until I glanced up at one point and I went, "Holy." crap we're oh, shit, gonna actually push the, the, the two <laughs> hours thing was like wow, i was dragging my feet he told me this morning he's like do you want to do it and i'm like i'm i'm in the middle of something and so he was like okay i'm like you just handle it and then so i was dragging my feet this whole time and then now i'm like oh you won't shut up so she sorry. was writing so. yep. she and was then writing oh. the author so yeah she was writing <laughs> steven i hope i don't ever get in trouble around you because you're a snitch <laughs> <laughs> you see what i have to deal I with i do i do i'm so sorry all right and somehow some way you've got to let me see that t-shirt the peanuts t-shirt right like, stick your chest up there so we can uh, see. Okay. see okay you gotta move your glasses here all yeah. right it is where'd you get it from who got it for you oh i love it who got it for you my wife got it from me, That's me. Nice. <laughs> man who don't love snoopy come on now exactly Everybody loves Snoopy. Mm -hmm. Well, boys and girls, 
we have completed another trip around the sun as the Book Asylum podcast. And again, mm -hmm. I want to say thank you to everyone that's appeared on this show. And I especially want to say thank you to my co-hosts, the people that put up with my crap and my <laughs> misbooking and mistakes and forgetting things and every stupid thing I do. <laughs> and yet you still keep coming back to do this damn show with me. <laughs> I love you guys. I love the indie community. Everyone here is fucking awesome. So with that said, this has been the Book Asylum Podcast. I am Jack Childress. That is Kristen Vincent. That is Anthony Castro. Andrew Ramon was here. Jen Amato is here. Our guests, Stephen and Mary, they're here. Doc was hanging out for a minute. Richard's in limbo. Don't know where the hell he's at. <laughs> and a special thank you to Bobby, Gene, Murphy for throwing together our ads for each week. Sorry we couldn't Every week. get it. Thank good. you. Couldn't get an ad for you guys because it was kind of all of a sudden. No but way. when we have you guys back on and we will have you guys <laughs> back on, you will have your own cool ad and the whole nine yards. Awesome. So with all that said, Book Asylum Podcast, see you guys next week with Jen. My yeah. favorite. <laughs> <laughs>